So today we are talking about a Briar character that I'm creating today um, with the help of our good friend Al. Um, so we're going to go by step by step creating a character. Well, good morning, Katie. We're going to put here your character and make sure that they are um, they are ready to ready ready to play. I should say for uh, the next game of Empire. Of course, you've come up with a concept for this character and you spent some time looking to the background, getting motivations, and all we're doing here is the mechanical aspect of putting a character together. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Quick Start Character Guide on page 84 of the PDF or of the rule book, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it together. I'm going to walk you through this, and so fill it in as we go. Right. So you. <laughs> obviously you thought of your concept first and uh, do you know what your concept is? Um, well, in regards to concept and background, um, this is what I'm basing it off. I'm called Luan McMahon and I'm around 25 years old. Obviously this is before I was in Brace. Mm -hmm. um, it's loud and expensive an outspoken door woman working the doors of a, a casino on a night shifts. Um, very loud, very barely, quite boisterous. Um, work long hours and when I finish work I'll go into the casino and then proceed to then gamble my money away, create huge debts and drink lots in the process. Um, <laughs> so whilst getting drunk in the process I also get into lots of fights. Um, so quite regularly in brawls and bar fights and such like um, and clearly not a happy person to be constantly in fights and drinking and working long hours um, and the uh, concept is when, when I've left the club one night after many drinks or walking down an alleyway for a, a shortcut to my home um, I get approached by a group of uh, Appearingly, men in men in black, as it were, asking for the time, and then I suddenly get uh -oh. grabbed. Yeah, they just grab my head and too drunk to do anything. Maybe not so much with the arm flapping. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get grabbed and uh, embraced. So that that's my general backstory. Um, and as we're going, a little on, touch, a little touch of things to go. What's the character uh, character's name, please? It's Luan McMahon. L U A N N E. Yep, and McMahon is M C M M A H O N. Perfect, thank you very much. What sort of person is Luan? Um, I wouldn't say a particularly friendly person, very boisterous, very loud, um, I suppose almost bully like. Uh, could be many things. I'd, I'd probably go with uh, probably more of a fighter because I'd like to make her a fighter-based character. Okay, so she's always going to fight to survive. I like it. I yeah. like it. Well, there we go. And this is a Camarilla character, right? Or is it a Sabat character? Camarilla this time. Perfect. That's well, awesome. I've got so, a concept for a, a Sabat one for another time, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, we can work on that together. Yeah. So you can see at the top of the screen here, I've put in your character's name, your name, your archetype, which is important for retest challenges, and also defining the very sort of core of what your character is. You don't have a title because you are just uh, another member of the Camarilla, and the sect that you're part of is the Camarilla. Um, obviously, we're playing in Southampton by night. Mm. Southampton Vampire Shop by night, I should say. <laughs> okay, so that's the very first step. We're done. We can move on to step two. Brilliant. We have to record the initial experience points. So we know that just for this character sheet, 
we're going to have 30 initial experience points. And that's what we can spend at the end of this. So just make a note somewhere on your scrap paper or perhaps on a Word document somewhere that you have 30 XP to spend. Now you've already chosen a clan, which is good because choosing a clan is uh, is very important to define how you role play. Clans embrace like to like, so you often have clans who uh, who follow each other's bloodlines throughout history, and they they they're boisterous rebels, and they they want to have boisterous rebels join them. So this is very very true for you. And now we're on uh, choosing the clan, we have to remember what your clan's initial clan disciplines are. Um, so we can make a note of them now. Um, uh, if we need to see it, we can go to the clan on the page, but I happen to know that clan Bruha have celerity, presence, and potence as any clan disciplines, which means they're super fast, super strong, and they can manipulate your emotions because their emotions are very strong too. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Your clan is common in this setting and obviously there are going to be some rarity adjustments to be made, especially for players during the Silence of Vampire Night. But for the purposes of this character, there's no rarity adjustment. So we don't have to spend experience or merit points into making you a, an uncommon, rare or very rare character. I don't think in this case we're going to be a bloodline either. Um, so just, move... Sorry, uh, just for the purposes of those that don't know what a bloodline is, can you just quickly explain? Certainly. When... Uh, when the clans were founded, they were created by individuals who are now, in the modern nights, ancient beyond all comprehension. They're known as antediluvians. The camera really doesn't really believe they exist, and the Sabbat are terrified that they do, and are hunting and trying to destroy them, beings of ultimate and ancient power indeed. However, as time goes by and, and generation follows generation, some vampires have had some potency or some change overcome them and it has changed the way that their powers, their disciplines manifest. It can affect their appearance and um, how they work to the very core. And so what you get then is something called a bloodline which is a, a variant of the main clan, which has some notable differences. In, and so we use those to uh, represent a very different style of play um, and to uh, show a different discipline grouping. And uh, it can have a significant impact on how you play your character. For example, there is uh, the main clan, La Sombra. They are masters of shadow. Um, and they are descended from the La Sombra anti-tribu. However, there was a time when uh, one of the La Sombra was messing around with fey blood and somehow mingled vampiric and fey blood and created the first um, Chiasid. And Chiasids are very different from normal vampires. La Sombra usually appear normally human. They just don't cast a reflection. However, Chiasid are tall, thin, very, very pale, almost white, of alabaster skin, and all black eyes. They are very, very alien looking. And they have a discipline called Mythoseria, which involves uh, the Fae themselves. So that's, that's an example of a bloodline. Oh, thank you. The next step we do is the assignment of initial attributes. And so, uh, unfortunately, my Alexa's kicked in. <laughs> we can cut this out, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we do is assign initial attributes. We have uh, mental, physical, and social, and we assign seven to our primary, five to our secondary, and three to our tertiary. In this case, do you know who you want to be? Do you want to be primarily strong, primarily smart, or primarily a social person? Primarily uh, strong. Excellent. So we're going to put seven dots into physical. One, two, three, five, 
six, seven, and then are you going to be working on your mind powers or your social interactions next? Um, so for the physical side of things, so for instance, like uh, if I was to use celerity and with say my potence, which way round would that go? Is that a physical and then a mental challenge or a mental and a physical? Say it again, please. Oh, sorry. Um, so I know it's a bit early on yet, but for like a combat round, when doing a physical movement, so presumably that's like when I go to punch someone, say, mm -hmm. um, what would I need to do that? Would that be with celerity or potent? So, th so celerity is activated at the beginning of a round by spending blood. One point of blood will activate your celerity powers up to their maximum level, then right. they're active. Celerity gives various bonuses and in addition, if you get it high enough, you can actually move faster. So you can have an additional round of actions after the everyman round, which basically gets you to attack again. Potence is a supernatural strength. It enhances what you already have and eventually, if you get it high enough, uh, makes you powerful enough to do an even more impressive hit. You become supernaturally strong and damaging. When we do challenges, we're using our total for uh, the pool of your, say, if we're talking about punching someone, your physical and your brawl, for example. The physical and brawl added together gives you your pool. You play rock, paper, scissors. If you win, then you compare traits. And if you have more, than the defending player, you have something called an exceptional success. If you have equal or less and you win in terms of traits, so if your if you're physical plus brawl is the same or less than their physical and dodge, then you don't get an exceptional success, you just get a success, which if you have high enough potence, doesn't really matter that much. That's how the challenge system works. So it's the pool rather than the discipline. The discipline does add to that, however. Right, okay. Um, I think possibly looking at the skill sheet, it'd probably be social, probably be the next one, because I'd probably okay. want to do a bit of intimidation or investigation or something in my character. Well, I, th I think definitely, and, and having a, a bouncer is, a, is, is not, I mean, it does require wit for sure, and bounces aren't stupid. Um, but I think being able to understand people and being able to, to work with people rather than always beat the living snot out of them is a, is a good job for a bouncer. So I think social is important in that regard. Of course, the last but not least, we have mental. So we can put three dots in there. Okay. Yeah. So we've done that. And then we can assign a focus. Now, this represents a couple of things. First of all, and most importantly, it gives you a wildcard bonus to certain draws that make you um, slightly better involving challenges, involving strength, dexterity, or stamina for physical, charisma, mental, sorry, charisma, manipulation, or appearance for social, or perception, perception intelligence, or wits for mental. The focus is also um, enhance your disciplines to make you even more potent in certain areas. For example, we could ha if we took uh, appearance with the presence discipline that you have, it makes your awe more effective and it makes your majesty more effective. So just a thought, um, when we're talking about physical, we have strength, six, zero, zero, seven, eight. Now you may choose to leave this to the last and just make sure that you are, um, you can really tailor your disciplines the way you want them to. But in this case, let's put that up front. We have strengths, it's areas of stamina, charisma, manipulation, or appearance, perception, intelligence, or wits. Strength is, is for, my goodness, strength is raw physical strength. Dexterity is the ability to maneuver and move, as well as aiming a gun, uh, stamina is your sheer resilience, how tough you are, how, how well you can take a blow, and how tough your body is at your resisting toxins. So, which one do you think you want to go for here? Uh, I think go strength. That's a good, a good choice. So, in addition, when you have strength and you have the potence, it gives you additional bonuses to your potence. 
For sexual, we have charisma, manipulation, or appearance. Hmm. Um, I think manipulation might be the more useful one. Okay, so you like to be able to twist people and make them do what you want. Yeah, because being a barely bouncer woman, I'm not going to have charisma. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not necessarily going to have appearance either, so that nah, fit manipulation is the way forward. I'm pretty certain there are some very, very attractive bouncers out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just my character particularly is, uh, yeah, his face has been smashed in a few times, probably not going to be too pretty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. And finally, mental. Even though you only have three dots in mental, you still have a focus, so you get one. Are you able to spot things more easily? You'll be aware of your surroundings. Are you smart and can work things out? Or are you quick-witted and able to uh, respond to situations more rapidly? Um, I think wits will be a good one. Very good. Okay, next up we have skills. And the skills we select with one at four dots, two at three dots, three at two dots, and four at one dot. Cool. Uh, primarily, I think I'm going to want most in brawl, maybe. <laughs> okay, very good. It's important to remember that each of these skills basically acts like a mini discipline, like a very tiny power. Um, okay. And brawl, um, which we're going to put four dots in, um, if I can click in the, in the dots, it'd be great. Um, allows you to have combat manoeuvres and uh, use use physical based combat manoeuvres. Um, firearms allow you to use firearms for combat manoeuvres and combat manoeuvres are used in combat to use essentially special effects. Knock someone to the floor, knock someone out, grapple them, um, things of that nature. Fight in the darkness. Excellent. And, yeah. So what do you think next? Do you have two three dots? So this is going to be your slightly slightly worse app, but still very effective. Uh, I want to say firearms and melee. So even so. in the UK, um, firearms are unusual in the extreme, but uh, okay. there are many reasons why a person might have a high skill in firearms. Perhaps they served in the armed forces, perhaps they're part of a gun club. It's, it's not impossible and it's it's more common than people realize mm -hmm. and so here firearms and melee it's important to remember also everyone that uh, this is the world of darkness which is slightly worse slightly more miserable and terrifying than than the real world mm -hmm. so always remember that these things are options so farms and melee. So I'll, I'll, it, I'll admit when I do characters, uh, especially with vampire, I like to go darker the better. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I would carry a gun in real life, but I had. <laughs> right, exactly. But it allows you to explore sort of darker aspects of your personality in a safe and you know, friendly environment, which is really important to me as well. <laughs> okay, so what else? You're you're pretty. You're real good at punching stuff perhaps you have martial arts skill as well um you're good good shooting you can you can accurately shoot people or, or objects i guess um and you are not so bad swinging a cricket bat around <laughs> awesome um because looking at the uh, just underneath the skills title it does actually say what dots to assign um, so the next slot is I choose three and assign two dots each mm -hmm. so I definitely want some intimidation and investigation I think excellent choice so intimidation allows you to frighten away low-level NPCs just by staring at them roughly like <laughs> and they'll go show them a war um, face <laughs> exactly show me your war face investigation allows you to spot things and, yeah. and check people out if they're carrying anything they shouldn't be um it's a bit of a toughie is empathy literally as is empathy so yeah. empathy allows you to read people's emotions it's very important and underused in addition it allows you to talk to people and calm them down it helps them come out of frenzy for example when they lose control and empathy is also can, is also useful for helping people who are like, mentally ill who who need some some mental care so it's very useful um yeah why not because there could be times where fighting may not necessarily 
be the answer. Precisely, precisely. And of course, you can you can make situations where something like that could come in handy. Mm -hmm. Make the story between you and the storyteller. Cool. And finally, we have four with one dot each. Hmm. Uh, security, streetwise, and survival, literally, as is as well, or. Mm -hmm. It's survival, so literally, the literal sense, or... <laughs> there's, there's more to it than that. Right. So security is very useful. It allows you to uh, understand how security of places and people work, um, cameras, security devices. Streetwise allows you to manoeuvre around a city without being spotted, and to follow people within a city. And survival is more for the great outdoors, but as a vampire, you are um, you are prone to fits of rage or fear. Um, the survival, uh, dot and survival, allow you to uh, any time you lose control, become violent and aggressive. You can turn that violence inwards and make yourself run away to preserve yourself. You don't want to breach the masquerade after all. Mm. Cool. Yeah, so, I'll go with that and, then. And you have one more dot. Uh, subterfuge. Subterfuge? Cause, okay. Because why not? <laughs> Remember we can add more skills uh, later on if we choose to do so with uh, the 30 XP that you have at the beginning. Cool. Okay. So now we choose backgrounds. Wait for the page to resolve. Show backgrounds. So we have one at three, one at two, and one at one. Remembering that because you're a vampire, you have to have at least one dotted generation. Cool. If you don't, then you are a ghoul, which is a supernatural servant. Right. Um, I know when we previously tried doing character creation, I think uh, two dots is good for me because that makes me ninth gen, doesn't it? With a 12 blood pool, two points spent per round, if I remember correctly. That is, that is indeed correct, and we can see down here at the bottom of the screen oh, um, yeah. what each dot of generation does. Now, generation is very important for a lot of things. Uh, generation represents the potency, the thickness of your blood, and also how far removed you are from the mythical father of all vampires, Cain, <laughs> the first murderer. Um, the lower your generation, the more potent you are, the higher your generation, the weaker you are, but the more flexible your blood is, so the more it can adapt and change. So like basically a child. A child can be flexible and as they grow up they become more like me. Like inflexible and stodgy. Uh, <laughs> difficult to accept new concepts and ideas. <laughs> so in this case we have duration broken down to one, two, three, four and five dots. And they have different uh, different levels. So let's have a look at generation. Here we go. So the mechanical differences. And the first start of the generation means you're a neonate. You'll be of 11th generation. And you can reduce that by taking flaws. Um, it has a limited blood pool. But they have, uh, they're more flexibly minded and haven't settled into their routine of the centuries. So they can get skills and backgrounds cheaper because they're more closely tied to humanity. Two dots of generation represent the Ancilla, which are the young but not really fresh vampires. They are very similar to neonates, except that they, they're slightly more removed from humanity and have slightly more difficulty in, in learning new skills and, and excessive humanity. They're usually up to 100 years old, but that's give and take. The third dot, the Pretender Elder, so under the eighth generation. Now they're getting a little more potent. They really are quite old at this point and separated from humanity. But buying new skills becomes increasingly more difficult. But because they are um, they're sort of in the mid-step between a, a younger vampire and an older vampire. They do have enough power and potency in their blood to buy one elder power. They can also buy techniques, but at a much greater cost. Right. Techniques are basically a combination of two disciplines to, to form a new effect. 
after that, Master Elder is um, they become really very powerful um, and have a great deal more um, ability to to wield the powers of their blood. However, they can't have techniques; they can't manipulate their blood in that way. And the fifth generation, or the fifth dot of generation, the Luminary Elders are exceptionally potent, very, very, very powerful, but very, very limited in their capability. They're very focused into themselves. They're they're so far removed from humanity. They, you know, they don't even think of them necessarily as cattle anymore. Some Luminary Elders may be so potent and so old that they can't even drink the blood of humans um, and have to rely on the blood of vampires to sustain them quite a serious flaw. And of course, the prices of things go up. So you said you wanted to do two dots in generation. That'll make you an Ancilla. Right. Okay. Yep, that's fine by me. So we have a lot of other options, and I'm going to very quickly go over them. Of course, if you want to learn more, then we can go through the book. Of course. But your allies are individuals that can get you things done. They are people that can help you, groups of people that can help you. A gang, dock workers, bankers, shopkeepers, things like that. Yeah. Alternate identity is a hidden background. So you're keeping your true your true identity a secret. And alternate identity is an increasing scale of how good your cover is up to supernatural resilience. Your contacts are individual people who can help you with information. So it could be uh, the bank manager, it could be your local MP, it could be uh, a police officer. It's just someone who can give you information. Famous how famous you are, either locally in a scene or up to the entire country. This is so difficult to, to go with and uh, certain uh, Storytellers may restrict the use of fame. If you're trying to protect the masquerade and you're known to be dead, having people walking around and having people recognise you is a big problem. Slight breach. <laughs> right? But it does allow you to do things. So if you're not known to be dead and someone recognises you, it might be easy to get them to do things for you uh, or to help you out with something, which is very handy. We've talked about generation. Haven, it's where you live. You don't have to have a haven. You can live in just an ordinary house. But a haven is special. It's It's been beefed up perhaps with better security or supernatural protection. Maybe it has guards or it's in a nice neighbourhood. It just gives you some, some bonuses that you can have in-game, which makes your house a bit nicer or a bit safer for you. Your herd is a ready stock of, of uh, people to give you blood so you don't turn up to game with less than full blood. Uh, influence represents the vampiric ability to change the world around them, to work with humanity and manipulate them. It comes in two forms, the elite, which is everything which is above the table, everything legal, and each dot allows you to have an additional focus. So the first dot you might have the police and so it means you have access to legitimate police concerns um, and each dot subsequent is an additional focus. The uh, influence underworld is everything that's beneath the table, everything that's underhanded and shady. So that same dot in police in the elite, if you took it in the underworld, it could be a bent cop, it could be a um, uh, a corrupt magistrate or something that you can affect in an illegal manner. Resources represents money and the ability to buy things. It has sheer purchasing power. And retainers are could be animals or ghouls or anyone that's specifically to help you. They are under your control and will do things for you. No questions asked. Cool. So do you know what you'd like? Um, I think I'd like to take a next point in um, Haven and then Herd. Oh, good choice. So you've got a nice house mm. and you have people to feed you. So how many dots in... Uh, I'll put two dots in there. <laughs> Run it, let's see. It's um, being naughty. There we go. Um, two dots Haven, one in Herd. 
three dots in Haven. Because you have to have one at three. Oh, yeah. One Got at that. two and one at one. Yeah, three in Haven and one in Herd. That's good. So that represents your uh, ability to have a very nice house. And of course, we have to stat out the house given enough time. So let's let's have a quick look at what you can do with that. As I said, you can have guards. Nice. A library to help you make research roles or challenges. Put it in a nice neighbourhood. Makes it hard for bad people to get to you and easier for like emergency services to get to you. Is it luxurious? Can you impress the mortals that come into your home? Is it extra secure? You get this for free. Because uh, you have security, you gain security for free. So we can make a note on the sheet that you have the security focus. Awesome. For free. Is, Is that it a big house? Do you have people that work for you? Because you don't have the occult skill, you can't even buy this one. So. Ah, that's all right. Um, I can't see that I'd do much researching. So guards probably be good because I'm all about survival. So. Okay, excellent choice. Go with that. So that's your first one. You have guards. Perhaps you have a cleaning staff that that works there. <laughs> yeah, for if I accidentally forget and like feed, <laughs> got forensic clear up team to hand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just put some staff in there. Don't worry about it going off the page. We can always add another line. Okay. And um, is your have you spent time amassing wealth? I don't think you have, because you said no. you gambled yourself into poverty. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you hmm. just in a relatively good neighbourhood, uh, because where I've acquired debts in my mortal life, <laughs> people could be after me. I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. Yeah. So, location. We can add more more lines if we need to. Okay, so we have security for free, because you have the security skill. There. We have guard, staff and location. This is tied to this one here, and there's three dots total. And there's your one dot for herd. That's perfect, thank you very much. Thank you. So, let's go back to where we were. Okay. So now we have the initial disciplines. <coughs> Excuse me. So we start with one at two dots. It's at the top of the sheet here. Yep. And one in the other dot. As I said, celerity is your supernatural speed and agility. Potence is your su supernatural strength. And presence is your supernatural emotional control. Right. Um... Think if we want to, if we want to, well, if we want to refer to our disciplines, we can see exactly what they do, um, and that's on, that's in the discipline section. So we can go down and find the disciplines. Here it is, page one one one. Now the discipline section tells you all about how disciplines work, how you use them, how you get them what they require to be functional and how they interact with your focuses. So let's find presence. Uh, let's, sorry, celerity, there it is. So here it is. This is this is one of the easier disciplines because it, it has uh, effects at each level, but you only need to have one focus for it to get the benefit. So if you had the dexterity focus, you'd get plus two to your dodge based defensive pulls. But let's have a quick look at it. The first is alacrity. When you, when you spend one blood to activate your celerity, any dots in celerity that you have are added to your initiative your initiative is the highest set of your physical or your mental stat. In this case, your physical is seven and your yep. mental is three. So we take your your physical as your uh, initiative. I think it's a really nice thing that they do. Um, it allows people to act with their minds or their bodies quickly. 
So that allows you to add your sonority dots to your initiative to make it uh, plus up to plus five or more if you have elder powers. Uh, or techniques, I should say, so that counts as well. Swiftness, when you're shooting at, or making a ranged attack, you get plus five bonus to uh, to find out if you get an exceptional success. Also, plus five to dodge when you compare if they have an exceptional success or not. Nice. The third dot, rapidity, gives you an extra round of actions after the everyman round. It means you can you move very, very quickly compared to anyone without celerity. Right. And the higher you go, the more benefits you have. Fleetness gives you a second extra round. One of the elder powers gives you a third extra round of actions, which means you are frighteningly fast. You're moving faster than the eye can follow. Potence is your supernatural strength. It works uh, very differently to celerity, obviously, because celerity is speed, potence is strength. And because you have the strength focus, you get to add plus two to all brawl and melee te uh, test pulls. So you're much, much stronger. And because you have the focus and strength, your potence is that much more effective. So you'll see that they have similar outcomes between the physical disciplines. Brawl and melee attacks are armor piercing. They don't get the benefit of armor when you hit them with your fists or with a weapon. Might increases the amount of damage that you do when you when you hit, which is really good. Because um, the more the more damage you do when you hit them, the quick the more quickly you put them down. Vigor is the plus five to the exceptional success, and so on. More damage and more damage, and then even more damage the higher you go. Mm. And presence is your emotional control. So the first dot is awe. You spend the blood, and everyone looks at you. They can resist. Uh, Dread Gaze is, is you become the aspect of the vampire. Show me your war face, Katie. Show me your war face. <laughs> there you go. And then people will run away from you when they see that. It's very good. And uh, entrancement is um, people will just like you. You are there's something that you turn on, and and people are drawn to you. They just want to help you. They want to be your friend. It's the power of celebrity, all with the power of the blood. So let's have a look. Which one do you think you'd like to have at two dots? And which do you think you'd like to just keep at one? Um, I think I'd probably like two in celebrity. <laughs> Good choice. You'll yeah. be moving faster. Yeah. And um, yeah, then the other's one dot. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I was just reading the thing. Cool. Yeah, yep. yes, there you go. <laughs> the sheet is really good. They uh, they really help you um, pick out things so you can reference it more quickly. Next we have merits and flaws. Now merits and flaws are a big, big thing, part of the system. And making sure that you have the right ones for you is really important. I would suggest to any player going through this to, to to really focus on um, the merits and flaws that they're picking. You only ever get up to seven merits and you can earn seven XP back from um, from flaws. So when we're buying merits, you don't just get merit dots for free. You have to spend XP into them up to seven XP, but you can never have more than seven points of merits. Merits come in several different styles. So we have rarity merits that represent how rare your character is. So if we're using a bloodline or um, or an unusual clan for the setting, we have clan specific merits, which are merits that affect only your clan. We have general merits that anyone can buy. Morality merits, which replace your humanity with something else, something that, that makes you behave differently, very differently. We have general flaws, which are uh, specific to, uh, sorry, general uh, downsides and things that, that, will, that will hinder you. And we have derangements. We have to treat derangements with a bit of respect. They count as a two point flaw, and they're handled very differently than anyone who's played, say, Mind's Eye Theatre has uh, um, used them. They're not, they're not. Uh, you pick an insanity out of a book. They uh, represent a set of behaviours that you must follow, um, compulsions, if you will. But there are many different types. I think 
discussed with your storyteller before picking a derangement. And uh, anyone playing a Malkavian, treat your insanity with respect. It is a potent, potent enemy if, if it's mishandled. So there are also um, setting merits as well, specific to the Camarilla or to the Sabbat or Anarx if they're being played. And my recommendation is take a quick look, but I'm going to go through and have a look at the clan specific ones to begin with. The Bruja get these options here. Brotherhood is the one point merit. Now, anytime you see a one point clan specific merit, it represents something that's truly unique and is at the very heart of the clan. In this case, Brotherhood. When you're fighting with other Bruja, you are better. You have a natural affinity for working with them. And as a team, you are more effective. Burning Wrath is a two point merit. And you are so passionate about what you do, your fists glow red with energy and, <laughs> and burn. They are burning hands and, and inflict aggravated damage. In addition, when you hit someone with a punch, you get a plus two wildcard bonus. It's, it's incredible. Um, Scourge of Electo, if you spend uh, one or more, sorry, when someone else spends one or more points of willpower to ignore your awe, or attempts to fight you, breaking through your majesty, which is the highest level of presence, you will cause them to get injured. You, they will take aggravated damage as your beast royals at them. Nice. And of course, the last one is a bloodline. So if you had the ability to, you might be able to play a true Bruja. True Bruja are very, very rare indeed and represent um, probably the true part of the clan, um, which are sort of distant, unemotional creatures. Um, but instead of celerity, they have the ability to control time itself. Temporis is their discipline, uh, a specific discipline. They're very, very interesting, very interesting to role play, um, but they are extremely rare. So you might never get to play one, which is okay. It's okay. Bruja are really cool. I love Bruja. So, you can see, having played one for about 10 years in another system. So. <laughs> they are pretty sweet. Um, I love the passion of the Bruja. So, so let's think about something from there. Um, we can also look at the uh, general merit section. There's a whole load of things which really enhance your character's capabilities. This is the longest time period, and so um, we're, I'm going to just pick some for you, and yep. uh, we can go on from there. You, in real life, you're going to sit down and go through these and really think about what you're going to do. So I'm going to just uh, skip ahead slightly. I think your character is a bit of a fighter. So I'm going to say she's going to be able to punch with passion fists. I'll, I'll um, admit, um, I did think of Brotherhood and the one that you've just said, the Burning Wrath. Burning Wrath. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Be That's handy to be able to fight with others as well. So. <laughs> right. There's going to be a lot of Bruja. Um, so Brotherhood is going to be the uh, a, a really useful tool. Especially if you're actually on the side with your clan. You know. There is a whole other book <laughs> which they've released, um, which has additional merits specifically for the Bruja and for every bloodline, in addition, way more rules and clarifications of rules. So go on to um, Try Through RPG and get this book because right. it's really good. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do for this one. Schedule that too, I think it's pretty good. Remember another thing. You come up with a character. That's how you're going to be role-playing your character. You're also coming up with a sheet, and the sheet should support the character that you've, that you've decided to create. In this case, you're making a fighter, so it makes perfect sense that A, you're going to be really good fighting with other Bruja who are also fighters, and secondly, you're so passionate and, and violent perhaps that you um, reflect that through physical changes in your body. In this case, you're burning wrath. Let's have a look at general merits. Remembering that I'm spending XP as we go. Um, so we're going to find stuff that's going to be useful to you. 
maybe do you think your character uses just her fists or do you think that she uses weapons as well uh definitely weapons as well i think so too almost I mean, kind I mean, of if she's caught up in a brawl she'll make anything she can into a weapon i think <laughs> that's that's good yeah. yes I, I agree um like I smash a bottle case, <laughs> <laughs> Smash a bottle, get a chair, Practice that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, in this case, I think ambidextrous is going to be useful. Um, we're looking at the ability to use two weapons, one on each hand, and gain the benefit of um, one aspect of each weapon. So it's a two point mirror. Uh, let's put that in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's breakfast time. Um, um, uh, so, one, two, three, four, five. We have two more points. Let's have a look through. Obviously, we're going to skip through this. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's have a look. What else can we do? I like, I like the ability to. Uh, I think your character. Yeah, this is true. I think your character has been uh, very fortunate in her life. Um, so maybe she's just lucky, um, getting away with stuff. This is a very good merit. It really allows you to uh, to save your skin a few times, especially if you're against stronger opponents. Um, if someone does an exceptional success against you, you can just turn it to a normal success using luck once every five minutes or once per combat. It's really good. So I'm going to give you lucky. <coughs> you can scroll down through this list as well, but I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Quickly. No so we've spent we have spent the XP uh, here, and now we can look at floors. Floors allow you to earn back the XP that you've spent. So we can buy up to seven points um, of floors, and here they are. So your character enjoyed. Um, gambling right that was part of what she did yeah and drink as well yeah <laughs> and and drink so maybe she's addicted and maybe that addiction has crossed over into her afterlife um alcohol is sedative but but i think your um i think the gambling is a is a stronger thing for your character so she's addicted to like adrenaline and yeah, taking adrenaline risk <laughs> exactly so i think I think in this case we're going to use the amphetamine rules because it's not just a drug or an alcohol it's also um your your addiction to certain behavioral aspects so let's take addiction there i think cool. that's a 2.4 i'm gonna put that down here If I can find it, we'll just type it in. So that's, there's a floor, two points. So we're only back the XP that we just spent on uh, um, the merits. And I think anything on that page is referenceable. Um, I think this is a. Uh, horrifically bad and painful but does represent an interesting uh, aspect um, your beast reflects is your internal love to fight so anytime you take uh, you get beast traits for doing bad things every time you do something naughty that's that's against the moral code you take damage it's like a, it's like your beast is trying to get out um, so it's also reminding you that you have to behave and be good so maybe maybe just your instinct it'll certainly make you behave better <laughs> um there's some pretty odd ones like like from vampire law maybe you believe that you can't cross running water um i think a character like yours is careless i think she um, yeah well she doesn't pay attention it comes with the risk-taking element doesn't it so exactly exactly that's right I'm going to put careless in there as well. So we've earned back three XP so far. I'm going to see if there's anything more that we can have. Um. <sighs> <laughs> you 
but you don't have to fill them in all now. You can do it later. But there are some flaws that you can only take at character generation. And uh, some merits that you take at character generation, such as your bloodline. You can't become a bloodline later. You have to buy it at character generation. Uh, is there something strange about you? Are you corpsey? <laughs> oh, you're, you're definitely impatient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it now! Any time you have to wait, <laughs> then it becomes, it becomes a problem for you. Oh, I think that's a good one. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, we've got 5 XP back. We're doing very well. There's some that, that, that go with you here. Yeah. I don't think your character is stupid. No. Um, hmm. Mm. Ah yes, your character's a bad girl. She's, been, <laughs> she's she's naughty, so she's got a reputation for being naughty with the other vampires. Perhaps it, this is more to that. Maybe your your sire was naughty as well. <laughs> like draws to like, as I said at the beginning. So maybe your sire wasn't such a good egg, and and you're suffering from this as well. <laughs> and as well, I'm led by example. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Notoriety. Spell it right. And there's your, there's your, your flaws. Two, awesome. four, six, seven. We've we've bought them back, and we've uh, we've bought them and spent the flaws back. This is an interesting character. This is, I mean, your character concept is an interesting character concept. That's that's the thing. We've got. But this is stuff that supports the the, the merits of flaws and what supports that as well. And I think that's very very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to this because it's sort of like when Mark and I have played games together where he does the controls and I make the decisions, I am pretty ruthless, so it'd be quite cool to uh, do this, like, if it's like, save the village or burn it, I'm straight up, like, burn it. Burn, it. burn everything. Burn yeah. Burn everything! <laughs> uh, excellent. Excellent. This is really good. So we're going to come back to our quick start guide. We've done your um, merits and flaws. The next and final step, well, that's not true. The next step is the spending uh, of XP. So we can buy skills, backgrounds, we buy more dots and generation, um, we can buy more disciplines, we can even buy out of clan disciplines, up to three dots in them, um, which is huge because it represents a little more flexibility in your character build that you might not otherwise have. You can buy more morality. In your case, you're going to need to work on your morality, I think, because you're <laughs> going to do some bad things, and that's going to catch up with you over time as your beast becomes more and more powerful. So we have 30 XP to spend. We can put it wherever, wherever we like. Now, the, the guide to spending XP depends on what generation you have. So we come back to that generation thing again. And here is the XP chart. And we can go through this. However, for this purpose, I think we're going to uh, skip to the end and then describe what we've done. Okay. So okay, so this is going to be a cut point because no one wants to watch us fucking faff around spending uh, XP. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all we need to do is take a note of what we've done, um, and I'm going to do that on your word sheet. Cool. Just watching the battery music again. Okay, so do we have? Do we have? I'm just gonna put a new. I can't do it. Anyway, let's see. Okay. Um. I'm just going to make some decisions here. Go. Here's my calculator. Calculator, please. As this bit's being edited, I don't look too weird and awkward, do I? Because I feel weird and awkward. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know. I'm not looking at you. You look cool. very pretty. Oh, thank you. You've done your makeup, haven't you? You look <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. You look good. Okay. Um, so we're Ancilla. What we're going to do to buff this out a bit. <sighs> Where's my 
press spins. So, and if you simple, simple is better for me. <laughs> it's so good. It's better for me as well. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few skills. And how much easier this is without a giant group of people cutting across. Oh my god, it's so much better. So it's two plus four, that's six. Plus four. It's twelve XP. Hopefully Mark's us and going, woo, 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 it's going to cross over and show it. <laughs> um, I'm sure it would be fun. Uh, do some maths here. I'm going to give you a third dot in celerity. Cool. So, new level turn three, plus nine. It's 23. Uh, so you have seven left. What else are we going to do? What else can we do? Okay, we need to do a try. What does athletics do? It's running after things in a foot race, throwing things as well. Oh, that could be handy. Alright then. Never know when I might need to throw a beer bowl. <laughs> it's true. I think I've overspent. Let me just confirm. Yeah, I've overspent. Um, we have one XP spare. Okay. Cool. Alright, so. Willy, 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 willy. So I've spent some XP for you. You only get 30 XP to spend um, at this beginning, and it used to flush out your character a little bit. Um, we've already spent your merits and flaws, um, so what I've done is just built up a character and hit on this sheet here um, some scrap paper or the uh, another piece of paper that you have to deal with. Um, I've spent some XP, so I've given you a dot in drive, two dots in athletics, so you can drive a car now, congratulations. Um, Athletics allows you to run fast, catch stuff, and also throw things. So it gives you throwing weapons. I'm giving you the ability to dodge out of the way. So when someone attacks you, you don't get hit, which is very good. Always handy. You, <laughs> right? <laughs> stops you taking damage, for starters. I've given you celerity, which means you'll be able to have another round of action. So the third dot celerity means you can go faster. And we have a spare XP to spend. So the total of this lot is um, 29 XP. We have one XP spare that we can bank and keep for later when cool. you earn some more. All right? Yep, cool. And those dots have been reflected on the character sheet. So those are dr uh, dodge, drive, and athletics, as well as your dot and celerity. Okay, so now we go to the next step. If I do this properly, we should be able to go that quickly. So let's go to 86. Too far. <laughs> Finishing touches. So we know that you've got two dots in generation, which means you have 12 blood points, as you said, and you can spend two blood around. So we can reflect that on the character sheet. And the way I do this is I fill in the boxes that I don't have access to. So we count off 12. Each one of these is a block of 5. So 5, 10, 
12 and then I fill in everything I don't have access to. So when, when you have a sheet in front of you, you can cross off with a pencil those uh, resources that you've used and track your sheet that way. We use the honesty, honesty system. I know you're extremely honest, Katie, so you'll be able to keep track of those yourself. Excellent. Okay, same with health levels, willpower, and any loss of morality. We note that we use humanity. That's the morality that you're on. Right. We note the total of dots of willpower. You start with six, just like most other people. So here they are, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is left because you can start with an additional point of willpower um, if you find the right merit. And uh, the total health levels. You have three dots, in, you have three health levels in each. If you have additional health levels from, say, fortitude or the rugged merit, then we'd have to take a note there. What I do to reflect that is I fill in the last box to represent that there's two. So you can cross off next to that twice. Cool. Um, if you have the rugged merit and fortitude, then you can cross off the last two. And so you'll have one, two, three, four, five on each level. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Great. But you don't have that. You're you're at nine health levels. And don't forget, because you don't have fortitude at all, the more you go into say injured or incapacitated, the more penalties you'll be suffering. Right. Was was remembering. And that's it. Before the game, speak to speak to the storyteller, make sure that they're happy with the sheet you've created. Um Basically, we go from there. So there's there's the dots on the sheet. That's the mechanical reflection of the character concept that you created. Character uh, concept is so important, and I like your one. Good. Let's have a look at this other sheet. This is something that's been created for sometimes a vampire by night, and we can fill in the, the information and reflect it from the sheet. So we have already filled this in. I'm going to copy and paste it into the sheet. Why not? it's already there i'm gonna make this a pdf um so you're a female right does your yep. character a female okay yeah uh and race i'm gonna go with caucasian i yep. guess yeah just imagine a a, a rough me they're a not so me. honest they're not so honest my evil twin that's out there somewhere when was your character born? Um, I'm going to say setting it as a 25 year old, so whatever 25 years ago was. I'm 34. <laughs> Maths, you can't do it. 1995. You, you don't need to tell people how old you are. <laughs> so we'll I'm say, not ashamed. <laughs> we'll say the 2nd of February 1994. Oh. And what year were you embraced? Remembering that the game starts in, in the 1990s. In uh, the um, so I think I think maybe we need to work out a slightly older because if you if if you were born in 1994, you'd be like six. In yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, okay. maybe not. That's a fair point. Um, 1974. Sure. Okay. And embraced uh, late 80s. Unless that's cutting it a bit too fine with the 90s theme. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you have to create a character that you like and you can role play. So mm. if your character was around in the 70s and 80s, then let's do that. Um, we'll say 88. Yeah. So you were braced in the summertime, maybe. Oh, no, it'd be late. So maybe in the autumn. We'll say you embraced in... Uh, so the 12th of September, 1988. There you go. Cool. We'll work out the maths later and correct it as need be. You are Brewer. Brewer. Yep. We're all we'll see. Do you remember what generation you are? Second. No. Two dots. Ninth. Tenth. Oh, tenth. Is <laughs> it tenth? That was epic. Fun. No, it's it's ninth. <laughs> <laughs> we both epically failed on that one. <laughs> I don't feel so bad. Are you ninth or tenth? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Ninth. I can't remember now. I think it's ninth. One dot. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up because I have to know now. We can skip this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut this bit out. <laughs> Uh, it is a knife. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So you're the knife direction. We don't know who your sire was. I think you do know who your sire was. Um, and I think you grew up with them. They are notoriously naughty. So that's something you're going to have to come up with um, with mm. your storyteller. This is something uh, that always hung around outside the club. <laughs> Looking for easy marks. Yeah, I think about that one. You're part of the Camarilla, and yeah. I'm guessing you don't have any charter. No. Okay, so you fill in your background here, what we talked about, and let's yeah. go a bit further back, like your job, where you came from, you know, what sort of childhood you had. It's all useful things to help guide how you shape your character. Again, we put in your personality and traits how you appear, what you are trying to do. So personality and traits, this means what sort of person are you to other people? How do you behave? Um, costume identify marks. Every character has to be identified by sight effectively. If, if a player is coming up to you, they want to know who they're dealing with immediately. Do you have a big scar that runs down your face? Um, do you have extremely pale skin? Do you have weird coloured eyes? Do you wear a long coat with gold edging, gold frocking? Uh, do you carry a cane? Well, that's the sort of thing we have to, to mark here and, and give you uh, distinct, distinct appearances. Um, agenda, what do you want to do? How, See, what is your intention? I, at this point, I have to admit, I haven't got past just general survival. Can that be a good enough agenda or will I have to be more specific? I think survival is an important goal, but I think that's a, that's a goal shared by nearly every vampire, Fair. every kindred. Um, I think I think how you intend to survive and, I mean, you know, you're not in a desperate situation. You have a place to stay, you have food, um, you have to, you have to have something that keeps you interested because you know you're facing an eternity, an eternity, and that's going to get real boring if you're living night to night without any plans at all. And it might be that you're under the, the thrall of your sire and you're being basically told what to do. It might be that, that you obey their commands, but I think that's also a bit of a cop-out because you have to have some free will and some goal in life. I think in Kazid life she was kind of unlucky because obviously with gambling got into debt, so carrying on the dream of making it big with money, I suppose, would be the That's the a thing. great thing. On Being the, rich. Yeah, on the sidelines. So I love a fight, but also love having money as well. <laughs> that's a great one. Okay, so so making making a lot of money. That's a great goal to have for a vampire. Um, so that could be one of them. Okay, so that's a, that's an important thing to keep in mind. And obviously, we're, we're going to come back to filling this in um, a bit later on, I'm sure. Yeah. Then we have information about that character who they owe and who owes them and if the character's been played by anyone else. I don't think in this case that's going to be, because this is your NPC, your character, isn't it? Oh, uh, NPC, yeah. Well, they're not really NPCs, are they? They're just other characters. Well, yeah. Well, I love this, by the way. I think it's a, gr it's a great concept. It's a great yeah. concept. Because it's a complete opposite of what I would do in real life. So. I do, as a LARPer, I like to try and take opportunities to do things that I, there's no way I would do in real life. I'd never gob off to someone. You <laughs> right? Know? I'm, not, so a, I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover in real life, so... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, it's, it's good. It, role play really allows you to explore like, aspects of yourself that you've never really considered. I think that's wonderful. So, I think we have the outlines of, well, we have a character. We have a character. This character is ready to play. You can print this sheet out and come down to your local vampire game, or my local vampire game, if you want to fly several hours in a plane, and uh, and play this character right now. There's nothing, there's nothing that needs to be done to it. You might even start with more XP. Um, 
Well, we do know that you, as an Ancilla, have status that you have acknowledged because you are. Okay. This is a binding status. Um, and you also have. Uh, I can't remember what the one for Ancilla is. So, this, this, because you're in the camera, like you start with um, some uh, status based on the age that you have. I'm really trying to remember what that is. Here we go, right here. Uh, you get the abiding status confirmed. There you go. So, so neonates get uh, acknowledged and Scylla get confirmed. Cool. Oh no, they could get anything. That's right. It's not, everyone gets everyone gets acknowledged. That's right. But you also get confirmed, which is abiding. And that's how. And then there's a the difference between abiding is a um, innate is I and uh, I can't think what the temporary one is now. Oh my goodness! <laughs> my brain is my brain. It's. Uh, Oh my god, it's not abiding, it's the other one. Fleeting! Fleeting! So there's abiding, innate, and fleeting. There we go. Ooh, got there in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So there you go. Because you are an Ancilla, you get the abiding state confirmed. It means that you've been in the camera long enough and you're part of the club. Cool. Okay. So you can fill in, like, these. this box is just to help you... Um, remember the, the quick stats. So, for example, if you're hitting someone with a brawl attack, mm. we're going to add your physical, which is seven. Yeah. With your brawl, which is four. Um, and this, if you're using your Burning Wrath, in fact, we can put that in here, w, we can add the two from the Burning Wrath. So your total pool would be seven plus four plus two. 13. Cool. And that's the pull you draw against their defence, their dodge. Okay. Yeah. Your initiative is the highest of your physical or mental. In this case, it's seven. Yep. And because you have celerity, it's going to be adding the dots of celerity when you burn blood. So we're going to add three. That's 10. Your initiative becomes 10 with celerity. And type that'd be great. Okay, cool. Does that makes sense. Yeah. So normally it's seven, and then becomes ten when you activate activate the powers of your blood. So stuff like this really helps. Really helps, um, especially if you have like complicated interactions with disciplines. Yeah. When you get when you get really experienced characters, for say two three hundred uh, two three hundred XP, and they start having com combination disciplines, which uh, combinations of disciplines, which are very different, maybe out of clans, um, you can get a lot of wild card bonuses that add up, and, they, and it becomes hard to track. These these boxes become super important later on, but they're very important. They're very useful now. All right. Any questions? Any concerns? Are you happy? Um. Yeah, um, the only other bit we haven't quite covered, I don't think, is the beast traits. Well, beast traits are gained in game, and that would be something to do when you are playing. Ah, right, okay. Okay. But um, no, that seems quite straightforward. I'm quite Oops. excited to play this one, get stuck in, and well, I'm looking forward to just, like, you know, having a go at people around me, because why not? <laughs> Excellent. Well,. I think that'll do it for today. Um, Thank you, we'll come back and hopefully do some uh, combat with this character a bit later on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's creating a character, well, a Bria character for now. Um, others will be going through. They may not necessarily be in field, um, but hopefully this will be enough of a guide to help you create your character, NPC, whatever you want to play. Um, so good night for now, and we'll catch you another time. Bye. Take care. Thank you.